Hello everybody and welcome to something slightly different. So this is a football manager experiment where we're going to give NK Maribor in Slovenia the biggest reputation and the most money they could have. Now I've gone into the pre-game editor, gone into it all and sorted it out. So if we have a look now at NK Maribor and if you're not sure why I'm doing it with NK Maribor go and check out my other series where I manage NK Maribor and I'm still going with them and it's like 2034 and the aim is to win the Champions League. But what we can see here, they are very rich. They have one of the best reputations in the world and they have an owner that loves the club. They're estimated to be £102 million, which is extortionate in their Slovenia. If we look at their biggest rivals, which is Olympia Ljubljana, just for comparison, they're worth £6.5 million. So you can straight away see what difference we've made to it. What we're planning to do here is see what happens to NK Maribor during their time as one of the best reputations and best or best funded well funded clubs in in history to be honest they've got a sugar daddy so let's without further ado we're going to skip to the end of the first season and see what's happened we're back at the end of season one and let's have a look and see what's gone on we can see straight away the Maribel manager hasn't been sacked so I guess that's a positive uh, but if we go and have a look at NK Maribor, and we'll see what they're looking like at the moment, how their season has gone. Looking at the schedule, well, we can see actually first place, let's look at the league. Uh, that's the playoff that they obviously aren't involved in. They won the league only losing four games, scoring a 66 point total, which isn't brilliant. Um, 22 plus goal difference, They looks like they smashed the league, which is what you would expect. They are one of the, the, the best team in Slovenia. And now they've got all that money as well. So that will be something to keep an eye on. I think in the future we'd expect them to get better and better and better and just wipe the league a lot easier than what they showed there. But if we have a look at their schedule, they won the Super Cup on penalties against Olympia Ljubljana. They qualified for the Europa League group stage, which is good um, quite easily, it looks like as well, actually. Beating Slavia Prague 4-2 on aggregate. Uh, beating Stelica Brzeg 2-1, which is a really hard name to say. And then they beat, uh, who else did they beat? They beat Alexandria 3-0 and 1-0, so 4-0 on aggregate. Got into the group stages where they had Borussia Mönchengladbach, um, Lille, I think that is, yeah, Lille, and uh, AIK. But they didn't get out of that group. So that's a bit disappointing because I don't think that group is incredibly hard if we just look at all the groups so they're actually yeah group a though to be fair they only just missed out in getting out of the group they lost two games which was to Lille and Borussia Mönchengladbach a bit disappointing but hopefully they can build on that and that will enhance their reputation so the season was um, I would probably class that as a success for the first season let's see how they did transfer wise so transfer history They've bought in a lot of free transfers. That's quite disappointing because I was expecting them to spend some money. They spent 325k potentially on Yanis Pizek, who looks like he could have some pretty decent potential. Really got to remember for the next experiment that I do to take off attribute masking so that we can see what the players are like. But a young 19-year-old 19 uh, 19 a, a 19 Slovenian who looks like he probably does have some decent potential. Um, they didn't sell anyone either. They just released Alice Mayak, who was the assistant manager. Oh, okay. He must have been old. They, he's gone on a free. And Zan Selar, who is someone I have a little... Well, had a man crush on in my save, um, went to Alumji on loan. But other than that, there isn't too much more to report on. So we'll come back and see what it's like at the end of Season 2 and see how they've gone from there. They should also be in the Champions League because they won the league. So they'll be in the Champions League qualifying. So we'll see how they get on in the Champions League in Season 2. We'll see you there. Okay, so the end of Season 2, and again, the NK Marable manager isn't on the list. The job isn't there at the moment, so that's suggesting he's had a pretty good season again. So let's go and check them out and see what we can see. So straight away, I see they've signed someone called Pele, which is unbelievable. Um, I'm hoping it's not the 40-year-old Pele. They have won the league yet again by the looks of things. Um, get out of this playoff final. There they are. So they've won it with a bigger points total this year. 77, a bit more points different ahead of Cooper and Valenje. Olympia, Olympia Ljubljana nearly getting relegated, which is very, very interesting. 
Let's have a look at the schedule and see how they got on in Europe. So they qualified for Group H, which is really good. Um, they didn't get out of the qualify. They didn't get out of the group, but they did have Paris Saint Germain, Villarreal, and Bayern Munich. That is a very, very tough group. So if we look to see how they get on, Atletico Madrid actually beat Real Madrid on penalties in it. But we're not here to focus on them. We're here to focus on uh, NK Maribor to see how they do with all this money. So where are they? Uh, there they are. They finished bottom getting a point. They drew one game and it was against away at Bayern Munich. Possibly the hardest game they would have played in that group. They got one point, so pretty disappointing. They got into the group stage though, so it's progression, which is good for them. Now let's go and have a look at their transfers and see what they've done in the world of the transfers. So we, they can see they've spent some money, 12 million spent. They bought in Pedro Nuno. Again, really wish I'd taken attribute masking off. They bought in Pedro Nuno, attacking midfielder. Um, any names that we really recognise? Josie Misic, I sort of recognise that name from Rijeka. He looks quite handy actually. Um, who was their biggest signing? Who was their most expensive? Andre Claro from Estoroli, who is in Portugal. Um, where did he go? There he is. Andre Claro. He looks very handy indeed. Left winger slash centre forward. Um, looks like he could be quite useful. How many games has he played? 13 games. 8 goals in 13 games. Doing very well for Maribor at the moment. And then Pella is the man they've bought in. Or Pele is the man they've bought in and is their now key player. Defensive midfielder. He's going to be sitting in there. He must have played quite a few games. 21 games, 2 goals, 5 assists. So he's doing pretty well. So it's at the moment, it's very similar to my NK Maribor save in the sense that they're going to, it looks like they're going to boss the league every single season. Um, and they've just got to progress in Europe every single time. It looks like they've got Versege as a feeder club because they've taken lots of loans and sold a few players. Was it go Defendi? Moved back to Brazil by the looks of things to Vasco da Gama. Um, Alas Mattel has moved to Aruch, whoever they are. Um, but yeah, so they don't really seem to be worried that much about the finances side of it. They've still got, they're still rich. There's now estimated value has gone up, I think, to 110 from 102 or 106, uh, which is good. Marcos Tavares is still there, but he's transfer listed. Oh. That's a shame. He was actually playing in the B team all last season. Reputation is still really good. Let's have a look just to see if they've had any staff changes. So they got in a new head of youth development and released Bodeba on a free. So Rock Zorko came in. Looks like a very good head of youth development. And they haven't, yeah, they definitely haven't got rid of their manager yet. So that's something to keep an eye on to see when that happens. But... As you can see, they are going pretty damn well. They're starting to spend some money as well. So let's crack on and see what happens in Season 3. And we're at the end of Season 3. So welcome back for a start. Obviously, for you, it's an instant second. For me, it's processing time of my PC. But let's go and look at NK Marable. Their manager still isn't on the list. So hopefully he's kept his job and they've had a good season. They have finished top of the season again. Pele is still their key player, which is suggesting... They haven't bought in anyone massive, like a really big name as of yet. But they have won the league again, apparently, by the time I get there. They have. Um, 71 points, again, keeping good difference. Olympia have resurrected from near death, and they're in. Um, a goal difference of plus 32. They are really dominating the league. They lost seven games, which is a surprise. you think they'd be absolutely honking at home by now. But we'll have a look at them, go into the schedule. How did they get on in the Champions League this time? So, they've qualified for it, got through Group A. They had Salzburg, Juventus, and Real Madrid. Interesting. That's a very tough group. I highly doubt they got out of it. They didn't, but they finished... Hang on. They finished third and got into the Europa Cup, where they beat Ajax and then lost to Monaco. So... They will slowly be increasing their... Well, I say increasing their reputation. We gave them full reputation. But they will slowly be increasing what they're doing behind the scenes, I imagine. So they're still rich. They're still doing very well. The um, transfers that they've done, they're start, they are still spending money and they're selling people as well, which is interesting. So Romario Benzar left for 3.4 million. Um, they bought him for 1.4 in the first season. So Romario Benzar has been sold. 
Who else went for a bit of money? Oh, Beige. Yeah, he, in my save, I managed to sell him for a bit of money as well. He's now gone to the second division in Spain. So Slovenian League still isn't that high up the list. But spending money, 8.25 million. They bought in Sven Karic, which is very strange because I bought him in my game as well. But I got him from Triglav. Um, hang on, what's going on here? He actually moved. He, I don't know what's happened there because I swear I just kept him. Anyway, they've bought in a Sven character for 8.25 million, which is a hell of a lot of money for NK Maribor. So that's good that they're spending that money. Dejan Petrovic, another young Slovenian, has come in. Mateja Rom, he's come in from Domzale. Swedish right back has come in, who's looks pretty good. They've obviously spent 3 million on him, 8 appearances, 1 goal, no assists, pretty good average rating. But yeah, so they are spending the money. They're attracting some players in. Lots of players retired and free transfers and whatnot. Yeah, so they they are starting to spend the money. If we look at the uh, staff, let's see what staff have moved. No, no new staff in this season. So nothing much to report there. What we're going to do is do this up to the end of the fifth season. Then we're going to look at all the European competitions and stuff as well. Just to get an idea of who's been winning what in Europe. Um, and what other big transfers and stuff have happened. Generally... Not too much money spent. We may have missed some other transfers. If I go back to history and go back to all transfers, let's just see who else they bought. So, yeah, they spent a lot more money after we looked before. So they bought in uh, Jackson Irvine for 2.2 million. An Australian in from Burton, I think it was. Uh, yeah, 2.4 million. Made a lot of appearances this season. Not performing probably as they would like. Uh, did they bring anyone else in at the end of that one? No, they didn't. So... Who else have they sold? Have they sold anybody else? They sold Vakusevacic, Vakulele, Damian Vukulezevic, that's how you pronounce it. And uh, he looks like he could have been quite useful. So he's gone off to Belgium. Then they released Alex Filler, sold for 375k potentially. Not bad midfield centre. Verbarnik went on loan to Bradford City. That's, again, an interesting one to do. But Benzar was the main player out. So... Again, not too bad from them. The Champions League group that they are in, if we have a quick look at that, as um, the final hasn't actually been played yet. But if we have a quick look at the groups in that, all groups. They, yeah, they finished third in their group. Six points. They won two games, both against FC uh, Red Bull Salzburg. Lost all the others. Salzburg having a torrid time of it, losing all six games. But they lost 2-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-2. That was an unlucky game. Let's go and check that out. See who scored for them in that 3-2 loss to Juventus. Uh, if I can find it. Where Where is it? Where are you? 2-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-2. Let's go and look at that one. So goal scorers. Their signings. Well, two new signings got the goal. Raul Rusescu uh, and Sven Karic. So we'll have a quick look at the facilities and stuff. See if they've actually improved anything just yet. Good corporate facilities. State of the art training. Top youth. And they've still got the same sponsorship deal, which is uh, going on. They haven't moved stadium yet, but I wouldn't expect them to for quite some time. They haven't expanded the stadium either. So at the moment, they're doing okay, really. They have won the Slovenian League title three times on the bounce. The Slovenian Super Cup, did they win that again this year? Let's have a look. The Super Cup, they did. They beat Gorica 2-1 in that as well. So they seem to be doing okay. If we have a quick look at the European competitions uh the national club coefficient is the one i think i want uh yeah so where are slovenia 27th so they're still quite a way off getting up into this top 15 bracket where it starts to really make a difference to the qualification places so they were 27th but they're not there now um oh bloody hell where is Where's Slovenia gone? Oh, there you are, 25th. I'm on them anyway. So, yeah, they get one place in the Champions League qualifying second phase. And then they get two people into the first qualifying round of the Europa League and one into the second qualifying round of the Europa League. So, yeah, they've still got a bit of a way to push to get into this sort of phase where you start getting someone in the best place and then straight into the group stage. But hopefully they'll get there eventually. But for now, we will we'll leave it there and we'll come back for the end of Season 4. So I'll see you then. So it's the end of season four, and let's see what has happened here then. So, NK Maribor, let's go and have a look. Have they made any big leaps into the footballing world? Pele is still their key player, so probably not. Um, I think they might have a new manager. No, they don't, actually. 
Uh, they've won the league yet again, which is good to see. This is what they should win it every single year, to be honest. Let's have a look how they've done it, though. 75 points, only losing five. Olympia, again, not having a brilliant season. Goldham to 31. They seem to be pretty consistent in the league without really setting it alight. So they lost the Super Cup this time to Balesis, who is a second division team. Yeah, interesting. They lost the Super Cup. Um, they didn't qualify for the Champions League. They lost to Zelenia from Slovakia, which is really, really bad. But they did go into the Europa League. They won the playoff, got through into Group C with Newcastle, Zelenia again, who they actually ended up beating, and Schalke as well. Um, but they did. Oh, they did get out of the group, but then lost to Inter quite, quite considerably. Um, they seem to have made some signings because there's some new names popping up here that I don't recognise from before. So, well let's, well, let's go and have a look. That's probably the next best step to do, isn't it? So, let's see. Did they sign anyone else after we looked last time? No, they didn't. Matthias Jonsson or Johansson was their last player in. But they have spent another £3 million. So, Maran Tunari comes in from Stour Bucharest. But they've sent him on back on loan to Stour Bucharest. Goncalo Lurerio joins from Benfica. Um, I, pff, looks like he could be alright centre back young Mamadou Kone also joins from Benfica doesn't look as good but again young Eric Yanza, which again is interesting because that's someone else I bought in my NK Maribor save a good left back for them he should be doing pretty well for them out there and Tomasa, Tomasa, Tomas Gerenza from Garisa joins a region young Slovenian region from Gorica on the outs um, do they, uh, Addis Hodzic went out on loan. What was their big... Did they have any big money outs? Not really. This is the biggest. Dino Hotic, who they've probably undersold. In my game, I managed to get a million pounds for him. I sold him to West Ham for a million pounds. But he's... Yeah, he, he progresses quite well in the game, but not too much of a big loss. If we have a look at staff, have they had any staff changes this season? No, and not from the back end of last season either. So they're keeping their backroom staff pretty pretty you know similar they're keeping it pretty much the same and not much is changing in that sense if we go through though and have a look let's just see if there's any updates with the owner he still loves the club the value of the company uh, value of the company value of the um club is still going up but they still haven't made that progression into europe into the deeper stages of the european competition yet so it's a bit of a shame to see that really i'd, I'd want to see them progressing a little bit better Again, not beating someone like Zelina in the qualifying game, yet beating them twice in the group is really annoying because that would have put them into the Champions League group stage. But they missed out on it, so it's just it's just a bit annoying, really. Andre Claro, um, I don't. Oh yeah, we did see him. They bought him in the first season, I think. Yeah. So again, they they're having these players they're bringing in are having an impact. Good average ratings, good goal scoring for them. Um, he looks quite good, Andre Claro. Mateus Jonsson getting in a goal as well. So 22 appearances. He's, well, scored one. That's the only goal, actually, that, I've, that he scored for them. 30 appearances overall in the league. And, again, good average ratings. They're buying people that are making them play better by the looks of things. In fact, if we go and have a look, that's not what I wanted to do. If we go and have a look at the stats, goals this season, Andre Claro got 25 in, well, is that in the league? I think it is. And, um... So he's doing very well, but he's also unhappy. What's he unhappy about? He's listed by request. Um, does it say why he's unhappy? Oh, scouting. I need to scout him, which is really annoying because obviously I'm an unemployed manager, so I don't have any scouts to my things. But Martin Kramaric, uh, he's again, he turns into a pretty nifty player. If they can keep hold of him, that'll be that'll be very good for them. So, at the end of the fourth season, they still haven't... They're doing what we expect, really. They're dominating the league. The league is growing in stature, which will help because Maribor's reputation is so high, it will bring the whole league up, which is good. And they just need to break into this top 15, really, and then they start getting a bit more progression in more clubs into the Euro European competitions, and they get the starting point further in the Champions League, which is really, really helpful. But... We'll leave it there and then we'll come back for the end of the fifth season where we'll do a quick view overview of all of the Champions League history and the Europa Cup history and we'll hopefully see that Maribor have progressed a little bit further in Europe. So we'll see you then. And here we are then for the last instalment of this first bit of the experiment. 
If you're enjoying this, leave me a note down below to say you want to see it continue or list other experiments you'd like me to do. I'm sort of focusing on NK Maribor at the moment, um, so let me know. I've got ideas of what if NK Maribor were a fan-owned club, um, what if they didn't have any players, what if they had a transfer embargo, what if they were in the English Premier League, uh, all sorts. Let me know down below and I'll see what experiments I can run. But as we get to the end of the fifth episode, episode? End of the fifth season let's see how they are doing so nk maribor have once again won the league but look at that key player marco asensio that is huge news that is massive right we're going to have a quick look at the league table uh 87 points they only lost one game to nk cooper uh 2-1 away from home that is much more like it that is what i'm expecting to see as we progress through this save so they've absolutely bossed that competition. They've bossed the league, which is what we expected to happen. Let's have a look at the transfers. And they bought Marc Asensio for 3.75 million from Real Madrid. He's 25 and is brilliant. He looks absolutely amazing. Only scored four goals, which isn't that many. I'd expect him to do a bit better. Seven assists, but looking very, very good. A sort of player that... I'd expect them to be buying with this sort of reputation increase that we've given them. Other than that, they've bought Lebohang, Lebohang Mikhezi, uh, a young South African. They've bought Vitenziv Kratzev for potentially 3.3 million and then sent them out on loan to Montpellier, which is good. Vlalda Bula, uh, 925k. Again, they're being breeding lots of youth talent, so expect them to either be selling these on for a fortune or using them later on in the game when they've hit their potential and doing quite well. And Antione, Antonio Muzek is the last one that we see here. So yeah, they've spent 7.5 million. Got in 1.6. Not too much really. Lukas Ahovic, oh, LZ90, has moved on to uh, Stour Bucharest. And he's, he's done all right for them, actually. He wasn't getting much game time at Maribor, which is quite interesting. According to, he starts the save as one of their better players. Um, other than that, lots of people left, left on free transfers. Martin Jadic probably being the best of them, I'd imagine, the goalkeeper. Um, James Vaughan has come and gone. Um, he signed for them for 625k early on in the series. And then, yeah, went to the B team, didn't do very much. Um, let's see if they brought anyone else in towards the back of the last season. They didn't. They still don't know that guy from Galitza. So, yeah, Marco Asensio is quite clearly the standout player for them at the moment. Judging by goals, Andre Claro is still here and he no longer wants to leave the club, which is good. Up there with assist as well, but the assist record assist is Marco Asensio and Pella just behind him. So the two signings are doing very, very well for them. If we look at the schedule... Let's have a look then. Champions League, they actually got through to it. They won the Super Cup again. The Champions Cups, they beat KR easily. Slava and Bratislava easily. Uh, Celtic, they beat in the playoff, which is quite, which is very good for them. Champions Group E, they got drawn against Porto, Man City and Napoli. And did they manage? They didn't. They finished third in the group because they went through into the Europa League knockout stages. So if we have a look at this and we'll just go and look at all the groups... So the group stages then, there they are. How did, ooh, how did they do? They got five points, so they were quite a way off Napoli and Man City. They won one game, they beat Porto 2-1, they drew two, they drew with Napoli and Porto, and then they lost both games to Man City uh, and lost to Napoli as well. So not a very good Champions League run, but how did it continue into the Europa League? So they got through the first knockout round, beating Celta Vigo 2-1 on aggregate, and then they got knocked out to Villarreal, which was yeah, slightly annoying. I'd expect them to probably be able to compete with someone like Villarreal nowadays. But they lost 3-2 away and then lost 2-0 at home. So actually got absolutely battered by Villarreal at home. 1-0 uh, at home, I say. Not 2-0. 1-0 at home. Which means it was 4-2 overall to Villarreal on aggregate. Not the best, but they are in the Slovenian Cup final as well. So let's have a look and see... Who else has won the big competition? So if we look at the Europa League, Leverkusen have won it this year. Liverpool won it the year before that. Tottenham has been dominated by the English teams. Tottenham, Man United, um, obviously. Well, uh, yeah, is that right? Yeah, Man United won it. Then Tottenham, then Liverpool, then Leverkusen. So interesting. Very interesting. Inter won it the first year of the game. Is that what I'm trying to remember what, time, what year the game starts in? Um, 
I tell, oh, I've got loads of messages to look at, so I'm not going to get bogged down by them at the moment. If we go back to NK Maribor, Mar that's not spelt right. NK Maribor, there we go. So, if we look at the Slovenian First League, so one, two, three, four. So this is the end of the fourth season, not the fifth season. Oh no, it is the fifth season, but it hasn't updated it yet. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting confused by. It's been a long day. It's been a long day, but um. Yeah, so Maribor are absolutely bossing the league as we expected. The Europa League, uh, they've made some inroads into it but haven't really stepped forward. Marco Asensio is a massive signing for them, which is really, really good. But And then the Europa League, as we were looking at before, has been won by Man United, Spurs, Liverpool, Leverkusen. And then Leverkusen have reclaimed it, so they've won it twice in a row. Villarreal actually losing in the final. If we look at the Champions League, wow. Uh, so Madrid won it. Then Atletico Madrid, Atletico Madrid, Atletico Madrid. So we've gone from no one being able to like retain it, which Madrid then did, to no one being able to win the well to then Madrid, Atletico Madrid winning a treble, which is unbelievable. But it's two English teams that are going to fight out the final. It's Liverpool versus Tottenham. I'd imagine Tottenham will probably win that one. Who's doing better, sixth in the Premier Division, and Liverpool first? So probably not then. Probably Liverpool to win it. Uh, but that's been. Quite interesting, to be honest. That has been quite interesting. Who have Liverpool bought to make them that good? Who's their big money buys that they've been buying in? So, uh, Callum Chambers coming in from Brighton, which is uh, interesting in its own right. Forty-two million. They bought Briel Imbulo from Schalke. Wow, that is a lot of money to spend on him. Uh, Thirty-six and a half million. Naby Keita, who they're actually trying to buy in real life, which is quite interesting. Um, they loaned El Mangala, which is, again, one of those odd transfers that you get. Serge Gnabry has been and gone. They bought him in. He's now at Man City. Bloody hell, he's been around. So Liverpool bought him for £7 million, then sold him for 46 and a half to Bayern Munich. He played three games and then moved to Man City, where he's now on the transfer list. So, yeah, that is looking very, very interesting. There's been a lot of movement, it looks like, in the Premiership. Who else have they brought any other big names in? Denis Ceballos, 23 million. Oh, it's uh, crazy money that's being thrown around. When you think that NK Maribor haven't done anything like that, and they've got one of the, well, probably the best reputation in the game. Let's have a look and see who Man United have bought as another big club. So, going back to the most recent year, 25 million to 20.5 million, rising to 34 for Oliver Lindischberg, who's an Austrian region. So, he must be have some hell of potential because that's a lot of money for someone like that. Sergio Gomez moved for 31 million so he's gone. They bought him in from Celta Vigo at some point. Um, in fact they bought him from Barcelona so they bought him from Barcelona for 15 and sold him back for 21 and a half. A good bit of business there. Barcelona have spent 41 and a half million on the same player. Unbelievable. Um, João Malio 33 and a half million world class attacking midfielder now and Kingsley Coman joined for fifty, potentially fifty-four million. So these clubs have not been afraid to throw the money around at all. Again, more money being spent here: fifty million on Jose Jimenez. Really good, bloody hell! They've been literally chucking money around. Isco joined for twenty-six million. Uh, Cataldi joined for eighteen million. Virgil Van Dijk joined for potentially thirty-four point five million. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Let's see. Did they have any big other outs? 10.75. Marcus Rojo went to China. In the first season, Antonio Valencia went to China. And they bought Icardi for 35. Potentially rising to 47.5 million. Bloody hell. I mean, and then the other ones that we want to look at. I don't I don't really have to do that. Because it's main, Man City. Who we know start with ridiculous amounts of money. So, they spent 154 million. Mateo Kovacevic from Paris Saint-Germain for 64 million. Renato Sanchez for possibly 91 million pounds, including add-ons from uh, Bayern Munich. Wow, that is a lot of money. That is a ridiculous amount of money. And then uh, 44 million for Bertrand, possibly going up to Bertrand Traore. Diego Costa, they appear to have bought him after he was sold in Chelsea to PSG. They bought him for possibly 40 million, 89 million straight out for Thomas Lamar. Oh my word, they how are they not winning the league? This will be a ridiculously good team. 52 million for Ben Chilwell. That's nothing. I've never seen that on Football Manager before that Ben Chilwell goes for 52 million. But 
Christian Pulisic for 78 million they bought him in. Oh my god, this money is absolutely ridiculous. Maribor will dream one day of spending this sort of money on these sort of players. Um, and then not too much happened in the first season. Their big first summer was Osama Dembele for possibly 80 million, um, who's now wanted by Real Madrid. But let's see how, how has he actually got on? Because for that amount of money, that early on, you'd expect a lot. And he's done all right. He's produced a fair amount. But, yeah, so it's been pretty crazy. If we go back and look at Maribor, because this is who the save is about. This is what this experiment is about. It's all about NK Maribor. And we'll be looking to see what sort of players they're going to bring in this summer. So, as I said, if you've enjoyed this experiment, um, let me know down below shall I carry it on, shall I do another five seasons and we'll see who else they bring in, can they like gate crash European football, um, and also let me know what other experiments with NK Maribor you would like to see, would you like to see how they get on in the English Premier League, would you like to see uh, what they would do with a transfer embargo, what would they do if they were a fan owned club, that sort of thing, so let me know down below, but I hope you've enjoyed this, this is my first proper experiment that I've tried on Football Manager 17 um, and I thought I would do it because I've got a good flavour of NK Marable going on on my channel at the moment so please leave a like if you've enjoyed it subscribe if you're new and you want to see more experiments and you want to see more about NK Marable and going forward into FM18 you want to see more of my Football Manager YouTube stuff um, but for now I'm going to leave this experiment here and whether it continues or not is all up to you guys so I shall speak to you very very soon but for now I'm out cheers